G'day guys, how's it going? So at each point in the process I like to dry assemble or roughly roughly lay out what I've got to have a look and to see if I like the way that it's all shaping up and so I've got the leg template at the back and this lower lower assembly at the front there. I reckon it's looking alright. So these were going to be the timbers that I was going to use for the for the legs. It's the only timber I have in this shop that's thick enough and wide enough to make the make the profile. The problem with it is it's a very, very, I'm not even going to say rustic, it's a very, very crap grade. It's bloody awful. It's got checks on both sides, it's got gum pockets, it's got gum veins through it, it's, it's just plain awful. So these boards are 6 by one 150 by 25 They've been skip planed at the mill so that they could grade what the timber is and you'll see that there's a few defects through it, but there's nothing major. We class this as a standard grade. It's not clear, it's not select. It's the next grade down, which has a few features, features, defects. So what I'll do is I'll cut these into roughly a metre lens, and then I'll face laminate them together, and I'll book match it at the top so that you get a book matched end grain effect on the top. That's a pity that that's going to get covered up. Oh well. I start clamping in the middle and then work out that way as I squeeze this together that might open up and as I clamp here and then here it gradually closes it in and pushes the glue all that way rather than having it belly out in the middle and because this is such a wide lamination you're gonna to have to put parallel clamps up on top as well and that's one successful glue up. But these ones are so easy. <laughs> so it's the next morning and these have been drying there for about 15 hours now. Now, that might be enough time, it might not. The glue on the outside is definitely dry, but what happens is, is that that glue actually seals the inside of the timber so it doesn't actually dry very quickly on the inside. So if I was to take them out and start machining them, when I bring the profile down to this skinny section here, I'm actually cutting into the what is possibly undried glue. 
It's not a huge problem, but what can happen is that the joint opens up just that little bit and you end up with a fat glue joint. Even though you've done everything properly now, it actually creeps open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the template for the headboard. And I'm not going to bore you with that again, I'm just going to skip through the process. The only difference with the headboard is I'm going to make it a template, a half template, and then I'll make use that half template to make the double template. Now that means I'm operating from centre, I'm not operating left to right or right to left, I'm operating centre out. So that'll be the back header and on top I'll put a bent lamination of Tassie oak just of 3mm strips of stack them up to about 20mm, 21mm, whatever. Go across there just to cap it off and hopefully I can bend it through there without breaking anything. I don't know, I'm not overly confident at this stage but I'm going to try it anyway because if you never try something and you never fail, what are you going to learn? So I find myself in a bit of a predicament here. I need to make a piece of timber 35 by 35 for the front top rail. So this face here is pretty clear, but there's also this gum vein going through there. And it runs out that way. So if I mark out what I want to do, let's say I want this face to be the top, the, the main show surface, I need 35 by 35. Come through there. And if I was just to cut through there, what that's going to do is going to have that gum vein right on that front corner and that, that'll look absolutely terrible. So what I need to do is I need to bring, bring it down somewhat and let's say cut it down there, come across 35 and then, and then use this section here as my 35 by 35. And then when I inlay the piece of uh, rose gum That'll go into there to, to cover up the gum vein on the front edge and everything will look fantastic, we hope. It's a little bit of wasted material, I can always use that for something else but I'm using a pretty big piece of timber here to get this tiny little stick. But sometimes these are the things I have to do because I don't, I don't hold a lot of stock of timber. And so with a little bit of forethought, I managed to dodge most of these gum veins. There's still a little bit showing here, and there's a lot showing on here. That'll be the back of the inside of the cot, so you don't really see it from the outside. And then on this side here, there's a little bit there, but that's where I'm going to cut a recess away and inlay a bit of the rose gum to cover that up. So the top will be perfectly clear, and the front is perfectly clear, and that'll all get covered up. So it'll look pretty swish.
So I'm going to call it quits for the day once I get this clamped up. Just a few of these crappy clamps. And... So what am I doing? Center first. So before I cover it all up, that's what it's going to look like. Looks cool. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. I realised that I forgot, well I didn't forget, I didn't get a video up yesterday just because I'm getting tired. My dad's telling me, Cuffy, got to take a break too. Summer holidays don't work every day. So I took a day off. Wow, I got those legs glued up. And it's a good thing too, because I'll have to do them tomorrow now. So, I'll see you tomorrow.